This video is going to show a bit of porting driver code uh, to Plan 9 from some other operating system. In this case, I'm still poking around at the uh, RTL SDR. Um, I'll have a link below to the original lib RTL SDR code that I'm working from. Uh, in this case, I'm working on a combination of the uh, central SDR library and the tuner-specific files. A command line program to take the raw output of the dongle, um, assume it will be FM radio audio, and do what needs to be done to make that into something the computer's audio system can use. And then uh, really give it the Plan 9 treatment by exposing all this as files to be um, read and written to. Uh, I haven't had a lot of time uh, to work on it. So mostly it's just debugging the code so far. Uh, but as you can see here, I manually put in um, the endpoint. Um, and it finds the dongle there. It can uh, run some tests to figure out which tuner um, the dongle has. Um, and it can also find the, uh, the bulk read endpoint. Um, that's where the raw audio data can be accessed from. Uh, for the most part, this was just a find and replace for a few things to make it more compatible with Plan 9. Um, I had to change some of the uh, names of the variable types. Um, so, when doing drivers, it's often useful to use these really specifically sized unsigned integers. Um, that way you don't get some strange error from inadvertently trying to cram 32 bits into a register that only holds 8 bits. Um, I did a quick change to the uh, error messages. Um, I did sort of mess up. I should have put brackets around there. Um, but the important part is this little R. Um, uh, that outputs um, error messages from Plan 9's built-in error message system. Uh, and the big one was just um, changing the um, read-write functions to use 9 fronts. USB command um, instead of the um, lib USB function. So here I commented out the old command and just put in the new one. And you can kind of see, you know, one for one what gets changed. Um, I use the same little macro here. I just changed what it uh, equals, you know, how it's defined earlier. So that works with uh, what 9front expects. But this, you know, handles, you know, in this case, it's the uh, the vendor bit and the um, you know read bit set, and then down here it's the vendor bit and the write bit set, and uh, then the address, the index. Um, in this case, the data coming in is called array, and those are the same. And so it's the length and um, the uh, Plan 9 or 9 front command doesn't set the uh, timeout here. There's another way to do that, so I don't bother putting it in right here. So in terms of just looking at this particular device to figure out how it works, some things I'm looking at here are the various ways reads and writes are done. Um, like these ones here, just sort of repackage, you know, the arguments that get sent in and send it off to a different uh, function. Um, <clears throat> others are read and write to other parts of the dongle. Let's see. Um, and something to note is that in this case, even though it uses the standard, um, you know, USB read and write um, bits, there's also an internal bit that gets set. So in this one here, it's a read. And, you know, it takes the um, takes this block argument here and puts it in the index. And for the write, it does the same thing, but then sets this little bit. So there's also like, you know, not just the USB read and writes that have to be kept track of, but in the case of this device, there's also some sort of internal write bit that needs to be set on writes. Um, So yeah, the near one I've noticed is yeah, this block function. So um, 
this block gets basically mapped to index and is both like a location in the device and used for setting the read write bit. Um, and we can also see how the limited sort of variables, um, you know, this one gets brought in as a 8-bit integer, gets shifted over 8 bits, put into a 16-bit integer, and then those, you know, lower 8 bits actually get used for the read and write bits, or I guess really just the write bits, the read bits are just left blank. So, but yeah, I've been kind of busy, so that's all I've really got for now. But it does sort of demonstrate that you can just sort of, you know, almost take just, you know, the code straight for, and this one was written to you work with uh, Linux and um, Windows. And so, you know, had to yank out a few parts, change a few names. Um, but other than that, most of the code's the same. This whole bit here that goes through just probing the, um, the tuner to find out, or the, ch the dongle to figure out which tuner it has, is unchanged. So all I really had to do is change exactly how I'm sending the commands to the thing for what 9Front expects. Um, and the existing code basically just works. Um, haven't gotten around to actually, you know, reading the stuff out and um, changing it, because that's actually kind of a big piece of math, because it comes out as this, like, uh, this complex number is what gets read out, and then you got to do other things to it. But... Um, yeah, it definitely turns on because these things are notorious for getting pretty warm um, when they're running. And, um, you know, if I run this and don't actually do the closing function, it gets pretty toasty. So it's definitely turning on. There's uh, stuff kind of coming out of it, but I got to finish up the code to actually turn it into audio, which is a bit of a process. So hopefully I'll find time to do that soon and uh, be able to post it. Uh, but in the meantime, you know, this is mostly just about figuring out how to flip the bits inside of various chips. And hopefully this gives you some idea of what to look for and how to do that using Plan 9 or 9 Front. Um, and in the meantime, uh, have fun.